Hi, I'm Akhilesh Kumar Shavastov, and in the series of uh, programming of the graph, in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the programming of depth first search. Uh, we have already seen the programming of breadth first search. In that lecture, we have discussed about how to represent the graph using the adjacency list. We have seen with the help of the C++ SQL that how can the graph be represented in the form of the adjacency list. And that adjacency list is very handy for us to do the coding of the breadth-first search. In the similar fashion, we'll do the programming of the depth-first search in today's lecture. Before going towards the programming directly, let's first understand what a depth-first search is and how do we find out the sequence of the vertices or how do we search the sequence of the vertices in the depth. So let's look at look with the example how to go about the scheme. So let's uh, take, a, take an example where a graph is given to us and we are forming the adjacency list of this graph. So for this, we are representing the edges of the graph. Let's say the edges of the graph have been numbered like this one to seven is edge number one. This is edge number two. This is edge number three. This is edge number four, this is five, this is six, this is seven, this is eight, and this is nine, and this is 10, and this is 11. So these are the number of the edges which have been given to us. And according to the edge, we'll be forming the adjacency list. So we already have seen that the adjacency list is nothing but uh, array of linked list, or you can say that uh, you can represent it with the array of vectors also. So let's say this is the connection from zero. This is the connection from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So these will be representing the connections from these one. So uh, to represent the edge number one, which is one to seven edge, <clears throat> I'm writing this edge here also. So one to seven means we should have a connection from one to seven, and then we should have a connection from seven to one also. We already have seen that uh, if we have the undirected graph, then the, both the connections are required to be made. But if it were the directed graph and the edge was from one to seven, like this, then we would have made only seven entry in the adjacency list one. Now let's take the another edge, which is two to seven. So for two to seven, we'll make an entry from two to seven, and then we will make an entry from seven to two also. And then for the edge number three, which is two to four, we'll make an entry from two to four. And then I'll make an entry from four to two also. And then for the edge number four, which is four to seven, we will make the entry from four to seven and seven to four also. For edge number five, which is seven to eight, we'll make an entry from seven to eight and then eight to seven. For edge number six, which is seven to 10, we'll make the entry from seven to 10, and then from 10 to seven also. For the edge number seven, which is seven to nine, we'll make an entry from seven to nine, and then nine to seven also. For the edge number eight, which is five to 11, we will make an entry from five to 11, and then from 11 to five as well. After this, I'll represent the edge number 9, which is 0, 11. So this can be represented as making an entry 11 in the 0 vector, and then 11 to 0. And then we have the edge number 10, which is 6 to 12. And for doing the entry of this, 6 to 12 entry has to be made, and then 12 to 6 entry has also to be made. Down for uh, edge number 11, which is 3 to 6, we should make an entry from 3 to 6 and then 6 to 3 as well. So we have represented the adjacency list. And uh, the next task for us will be to perform the traversal. So for performing the traversal, we first say that uh, this is this the first vertex is zero number vertex. So let's go to zero number vertex and let's visit that vertex. Let's say this place has been visited. 
then marking this uh, with the blue color that this vertex has been visited this vertex number 0 now if we go to the adjacency list uh, of uh, 0 we find that there is an entry 11 so next will be we, we will see that whether the 11 has been visited or not yes 11 has not been visited so you can visit the 11 to maintain whether a vertex has been visited or not we can maintain a visited array or visited vector also let's say this is a direct address table which is denoting the visited status of all the vertices so let's say we have 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and, and then let us make the entry 0 here it means that these vertices have not been visited so once a vertex will be visited we'll mark here one just uh, see that we have first started with a zero number vertex so we have marked its status as one from zero we have seen a connection 11 <clears throat> and 11 has not been visited yet so let's mark 11 as visited and count is as visited in the dfs sequence so let's say this is the dfs sequence now let's go to the 11 number uh, adjacency list and let's see if 5 is visited or not so 5 is not visited we can refer to the visited array or the visited vector 5 has not been visited so let's visit this count this as visited in the dfs sequence and go to the adjacency list of 5 so you can see that when we are doing the depth first search we are picking up the first vertex in the adjacency list and going in the depth of that so 5 to 11 is a connection 11 has already been visited so no need to go for that again now let's look at uh, the uh, previous connection or the correct call for 5 uh, was made from 11 so we come back to the 11 and then let us look at the next uh, connection from the 11 which is 0 0 has already been visited so we do not need to go to that vertex uh, again so there is no connection from uh, uh, 11 so we will have to look at who has called 11 so 11 was called by the zero number vertex you can see from the adjacency list now there is no more connection from zero so we can say that uh, the uh, connections are now complete from zero and zero was the vertex from which we have started so there is no way out or we cannot go anywhere else so if this kind of the situation happens then we will be confused about uh, what which vertex should be taken in the next so what we do that uh, we have to check the vertices in the sequence whether zero has been visited yes zero has been visited and then let's see if one has been visited so one has not been visited so we can now start from one so the next vertex which has been visited is one let's see the connection from one this is seven so let's mark seven as visited because seven has not been visited let's go to the adjacency list of seven so in the adjacency list of 7 we have 1 1 has been visited so we will not visit that again let's look at 2 2 has not been visited so let's visit this 2 mark its status as 1 and now let's go to the adjacency list of 2 in the adjacency list of 2 we have 7 which has already been visited so no need to go for that again next vertex is 4 yes it has not been visited so let's visit this and mark this status as 1 go to the adjacency list of 4 here we have 2 which has already been visited 7 which has already been visited so all the connections from 4 are complete we will now backtrack so when we backtrack you can see that 4 was called by 2 all the connections from 2 are over so we will backtrack who has called 2 so 2 was called by 7 we are going to the adjacency list of 7 again and then in this we have seen 1 we have seen 2 let's look at 4 Four has been visited, so no need to visit this again. Then eight, eight has not been visited, so let's mark its status as eight visited. And eight has been marked visited. Go to the adjacency list of eight. In the adjacency list of eight, we have seven. Seven has been visited already, so backtrack and go to seven again. Now we have ten. The ten has not been visited, so let's mark it visited. go to the adjacency list of 10 in the 10 we have 7 7 has already been visited so we do not need to go for this again and let's backtrack again 
So seven was sorry, ten was called by seven. So let's go back to ten again, and then we have to see this nine. So nine has not been visited yet. So let's mark it to visited, and then all the connections from seven is over. You will have to look uh, from where seven was called. So the seven was called from this four. So all the connections from this uh, four is also complete. So we will have to backtrack and see that from where. Sorry, the seven was called from one. So uh, we have seen that all the connections from one is also over. So we'll once again backtrack and then. Since you have seen that one was started automatically, so we cannot go for the previous calls. So since there is no way out from one again, we will have to see what other vertices are left out. So in the sequence zero one have been already visited, then we have to look for two which has already been visited. Then we can start with three which has not been visited. So we are going for the connection from three, mark it visited, add it to the DFS sequence, and let's look at the connection from three. So from connection from three we have six. So six has not been visited. Let's mark as visited and add it to the DFS sequence. Go to the adjacency list of six. Here we have twelve, and twelve has not been visited. So let's mark it visited and add it to the DFS sequence. Go to the connections from twelve. It is six. This has already been visited. So backtrack and go to six again, and then three. Three has already been visited. So there is no no more connection from the six. Let's look at who has called six. So six was called by three. So we are backtracking, and then there is no way out. So we will look at the vertices in the sequence. Let's look at four. If this has been visited, no, it has not been visited. Uh, sorry, it has been visited. Five has also been visited. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All these have got visited. So all these have got visited. So we can say that uh, uh, there is no need to go again, and the DFS sequence is complete. So this is the DFS sequence. Now to understand that what the process is being followed for going into depth, it would certainly be the recursive call which will help us in doing that. Because if you have to see the first connection and go in the depth, first connection and go in the depth. So only thing uh, that will help us will be the recursion. And there is one more element that if there is no way out or we cannot go further from any connections in the depth, and while backtracking also we have seen that there is no way out, then in the sequence we will have to start the next vertex. So we should first write the algorithm which will help us in doing so. Now to look at uh, uh, the algorithm, first try to understand that uh, what we have done in the sequence. The very first thing that we have done in the sequence is that we have maintained the, the status or the visited vector. All the vertices have been initialized to zero here. It means that no vertices have been visited. The next thing is that we have. Uh, And then the sequencing of the vertices, or we have, we are going to check the sequence of the vertex whether they have been visited or not. In case there is no way out, so we have to write a DFS algorithm wherein the sequence of the vertex will be checked if, in case there is no way out. Another thing is that we need to write the recursive algorithm for going in the depth. So keeping all these things in the mind, let's now. Write the DFS algorithm. Now, in the DFS algorithm, a graph is given to us. It means the adjacency list is given to us, and the number of vertex is also known to us. So, in this, let's say the adjacency list is represented by A D J, and n is the number of the vertices. So, for this, we need to have the visited array, and in this visited array, the size of this visited array will be n. And all the elements of this visited array will be initialized to zero. Now, in the sequence, we need to visit these vertices. It means for i equals to zero to n minus one, 
we are assuming that the vertices are numbered from 0 to n minus 1. We have to call the recursive algorithm. So let's say DFS visit is the function which makes the calls and this algorithm is written recursively. So this is the first algorithm for initializing the visited visited vector and calling the recursive function. Let's write the recursive function. The recursive function is going to be very simple. So this is the DFS visit function wherein the adjacency list has been provided. And the vertex from which we have to start our traversal is also given. So while calling the adjacency list uh, uh, DFS visit, you can pass the adjacency list to this function also. Okay, so I've made a certain correction here that in the DFS visit function, you will have to pass the adjacency list and the vertex i. Now let's write this algorithm. Now it's in, in this uh, algorithm, we will first have to visit this i. It means we will have to print the in the DFS sequence the vertex i. And we will have to mark the status of the ith vertex as visited. After this, we will see all the connections from this i. So for checking the connections from i, and just to check if uh, the vertex has been visited or the connected vertex is visited or not, let's take a loop for j element of the adjacency list of i. If this vertex i, uh, it this vertex j, it means if the visited status of the jth vertex is zero, it means that we have to visit this vertex. So for visiting, we will call the DFS function recursively. So adjacency list will be passed and this j vertex will also be passed. Okay, so this is the, these are the two functions with the help of which we will write the code. And now let us now move to our program for the DFS and uh, for this DFS, we will make the use of this graph to show everything. Okay, so now let's open this code in C++ STL using the C++ STL. So here is the screen, which is, a, which is giving you the look of both the thing. It means the graph and the code for the DFS search. So for coding in the DFS search, we need the DFS and the DFS visit function. Let us look at the DFS function. So whatever algorithm we have written, the same has been reflected here. So for DFS, we need the adjacency list and the number of vertices in the graph. We need a vector status and the status of the vector has been initialized to zero. After this, after this, we will look at all the vertices in the sequence. And if the status of that vertex is zero, we will visit that vertex. Fine. So while calling the DFS visit function, which is the recursive function, we need to pass the adjacency list, the status vector, and the vertex to which we are going to explore. And the vertex should be explored only if that vertex has not been visited. It means the status is zero. 
Now let's visit this vertex i. For visiting the vertex i, let's look at this part. This is the recursive function which has the adjacency list, a status vector, and an i as a parameter. Since we are going to change the status through this function, hence the ampersand with the status vector. First, we will mark the status of i at vertex as visited. Then we will print this vertex. After this, we will check all the connections from i. So we will go in the adjacency list of i and we'll look at every single entry in the adjacency list of i. So for j equals to 0, j less than adjacency list i dot size, in case the number of elements in the adjacency list is 4, so the loop will vary from 0 to 3. If the status of this aij or adjacency list i and jth entry in the adjacency list i is 0, it means that that vertex has not been visited yet, so we will call the function DFS visit function recursively and visit that. So the three parameters are passed here: the adjacency list, the status, and ADJ IZ. It means the vertex to be visited. Now after this, let's look at the main function. In the main function, we are actually making the adjacency list. For making the adjacency list, we have taken the number of vertices from the user. We have declared the size of the adjacency list same as the number of elements or number of uh, nodes in the graph. And then we have asked for the number of the edges. After asking this, we have taken every edge and its endpoints AB and pushed the endpoints in the adjacency list. If the edge is AB, then in the A adjacency list, we have put B, and in the B adjacency list, I have put A. After this, I have printed this just to know what is the adjacency list and whether it has been formed correctly or not. After this, we have called the DFS function, wherein I pass two things, the adjacency list and the number of vertices. So after this, let's run this and let's check that if this function is correct. Let's look at the graph and according to which we will make the entries. So in this graph, we have a total of 13 vertices and 11 edges. The endpoints of edge 1 is 1 and 7, endpoints of edge 2 is 2 and 7, endpoints of edge 3 is 2 and 4, endpoints of edge 4 is 4 and 7, endpoints of edge 5 is 7 and 8, endpoints of edge 6 is 7 and 10, endpoints of edge 7 is 7 and 9, endpoints of edge 8 is 5 and 11, Endpoints of edge 9 are 0 and 11. Endpoints of edge 10 is 6 and 12. Endpoints of 11 number edge is 3 and 6. So this is the adjacency list. We can verify this adjacency list from here. You can see that from 0, 11 is connected. From 1, 7 is connected. From 2, 7, 4 is connected. From 3, 3, 6 is uh, from 3, 6 is connected, from 4, 2, 7 is connected, and so on and so forth. Now, what is the sequence of the DFS? We have identified that the sequence of the DFS is this 0, 11, 5, 1. Let's verify if the sequence is same. So we have 0, we have 11, we have 5, then 1, then 7, then 2, then 4, then 8, then 10 then 9, then 3, then 6, and 12. So it means that we have written it correctly. So this way, we can do the programming of the DFS. It's going to be very easy.
if you have the idea about the array of the vectors and uh, how to make the entries in the adjacency list using the array of vector, this is going to be very, very simple. So in the next lecture, we, were going, we will discuss about how to find the number of connected components and number of elements in each connected component using the database. Thank you.